Well, hello and welcome back here to Everlasting Summer. Now, at the last of the uh, at the last of the end episode, at the end of the last episode, we were tasked we are with the task of finding Shurik. He of the rather stentient voice and love of all things robotic. We've got a number of places we can go. We can go to the boathouse. We can go to the bus stop, or we can go to the forest. I don't think there's any... Oh, we can go and check out his room. I should imagine... No, that's not his room. Uh, ah, that's that's our own room. We can go back to our own room. I should imagine not search at all. Okay. <clears throat> and we can't go anywhere else. Nope. Okay. Let's go to the forest. It was obvious that Olga and her pioneers had already searched every nook and cranny of the camp, possibly every crook and granny as well. Roamed the length, the breadth, the height, the depth of it. So, probably it's not worth looking for Shurik in the canteen or on the beach, more's the pity. Or in the cybernetics club, it was his second home. Or maybe even his first. Thus it might be worth looking around the surrounding forest. I didn't plan to go far to go far into the forest, otherwise it might be me who they were searching for tomorrow. I didn't really visit the countryside often. I just stayed in a country house every summer during my childhood. But that one was very close to the city. But in this camp it was possible to find everything I hadn't seen for so long. Overwhelming vegetation, singing birds, and fresh air. Don't you mind about that smell? It's good for you. It's rather fresh. Look, you see, if you step in it, it still squelches. I found a meadow and sat on a stump. How peaceful this place is. But where in the world is Shurik? Actually, he could have been taken against his will, kidnapped by aliens. Yeah, Perhaps Electronic would have preferred the probe. I don't know. This camp is far from normal, so pioneer disappearances should not be all that strange. An intriguing possibility. Could it be the work of whoever, whichever force sent me here? Or is it just some separate local entity's doing? Lost in my own thoughts, I didn't notice how the grass before me started moving. I looked closely and saw a squirrel. It approached me carefully and stared at my hands. Probably used to getting fed there. Sorry, friend. I don't have anything with me. Well, sod you, said the squirrel. Of course, the squirrel could not understand me and continued just to sit there waiting for treats. I felt sorry for it because I didn't have a crumb of bread in my pocket. I realised that I'm ashamed even to look it in the eyes and decided to move on. After some time, some more wandering, I came to the washstands. Turns out he's not in the forest either. At least not in the surrounding area. And going further is just frightening. I walked to the washstands and took off my shirt and tried to wipe myself down because I was all sweaty. However, it wasn't so easy. I won't be able to get into the washbowl and there's not even a ladle. Suddenly I heard footsteps from behind. I turned around. Electronic was walking in my direction. Looking for Cherik? Yes. You too? Me too. Listen, you know him better. Where could he have gone? I don't have a clue, he answered sadly. Well, I just don't understand why everyone has made such a fuss. During the night, wasn't he in the cabin with you? Then he can't have gone, been gone for too long. Maybe he went for a walk. You don't know, Shurik, said Electronic excitedly. He is fanatically dedicated to his work. His life consists of robotics and cybernetics. He doesn't even look at me anymore. People like him are one in a million. No, a billion. His talent is boundless. Talent. Hmm. I, I look up to him. He is a man of steel. No, symphony. Triumphant. At that moment, he looked like Hitler, making a speech in front of a crowd of thousands. Even his gestures matched. Okay. So what? So what? You don't understand, do you? No, and that's a, a fairly impressive look, let's be honest here. 
He spends all of it, you see. All of his free time in a club. All. So, disappearing just like that is unusual for him? Of course. It seems like electronic calm down. Okay. He looked at me intently. Are you going to wash? Can I watch? Not really. Just rinse off a little. It is hot. Me too. He looked around. I wish there was a bucket or a ladle. Something to get more water with. Yeah, I noticed already. Then let's do this. He walked behind the washstands and pulled on one of the taps. To my surprise, it ended turning up rather than pouring into the wash bowl. The water splashed up almost 90 degrees. You could manage to wash yourself that way. Bow chicka bow wow. Meanwhile, the electronic took off his shirt and then squatted. So it seemed like he pulled down his shorts. Are you listening, ladies? I couldn't really tell because the washstand he was behind concealed him up to his waist. I'm standing on the other side. You should see what I'm seeing. He directed the stream towards himself and started to sing something quietly. Let's clean my chimney. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Let's clean my chimney, chimney sweep. I stood astonished, not knowing what to do. He seemed to notice it. I'll wash myself and then you can use it. Gosh, I got such a massive chilled. <laughs> well, you know, I, I just remembered I have to do something to do. Gotta go. Out of all the eccentricities of Electronic, the moment I saw him, I, I just saw was the weirdest one. Hey, what's up with you? A cold shower on such a hot day is the best thing ever. No, no, no. That won't do. And anyway, I have to go. I put my shirt on quickly and ran back to the forest. I wonder what's got into him. I wonder if I'll ever forget what I saw. Oh, man. Ah. Uh, boathouse. Bus stop. Or oh, back to our hut. Let's... Yeah, let's do the bus stop. The bus stop seemed to be a fine choice. A strange thought came across me. Perhaps Shurik is in the same situation as me and decided to run away from his camp, maybe by the 410 bus. It could really turn out to be true if he came here by accident, too. Perhaps he's running away from Electronic. Although the chances of that are quite slim, yes. But you never know. I know, and he will never leave. What if the bus would really come? No, it won't. However, I could hardly believe in that. Indeed, I spent a couple of minutes walking to the bus stop to make sure there were no signs of Shurik or anyone else here, and headed back to the camp. Somebody rushed out from behind the gates and bumped into me, causing a small earthquake. The impact wasn't strong, so I just staggered. Miku stood in front of me and rubbed her bruised forehead. Oh, sorry. It's alright, it's my fault. I was going to the music club and got lost in thought about the new song, you know, thinking up the lyrics and that music. I hadn't realised how I'd got here. So you don't have to apologise. Her words per minute freight obviously exceeded the recognition limits of my brain. I made an attempt to retreat promptly. Sure, sure, gotta go, you know. Oh, wait! I wanted to leave as usual without having to listen to her, but Miku grabbed my hand. Her grasp gave me the creeps as I got a clear vision of an ag agonising execution by another rap session. Can you please help me a little, please? Just a teensy weasy bit. That definitely wasn't on my to-do list today. Well, I'd be glad to, but it's pretty, 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 please. Miku looked at me with such poppy dog eyes that my heart started to melt. She wasn't exactly going to let go of my hand. And what help exactly do you need? You'll accompany me. I can't imagine. I can't manage to compose it on my own. I can sing or play. I can't do both at the same time. 
Even our virtuoso has her weaknesses. Well, you know, I can't really play any instruments. Never mind that, I'll show you everything. Come on, let's go. Oh, go with Miku, don't go with Miku, go with Miku. Let's go with Miku. On the other hand, I'm not losing anything. However, she dragged me along with her. Probably nothing good will come of this, but the only way to get her off me is to wrestle my hand out of hers. But that wouldn't be very nice. Nothing bad will happen after all. Probably. Within a minute, we were already standing in the music club. Miku took a guitar. Here, have a look! She sat down and started playing. I tried to follow her hands. The tune seemed quite simple. It seemed quite easy to repeat it. Got it? Kind of. Let's try. I took the guitar and started playing. Yeah, it didn't really work out. Let me show you one more time. She played much better than me. Looking at Miku, I wondered. Of course, she was a chatterbox. She was naive and clumsy. However, she was extremely talented in music. Try again. I managed much better the second time. Wow, that's much better. She smiled. It wasn't hard, in fact. Just repeat the same notes over and over. Just don't lose track. Start on my command. Okay. Ready? Go. It was a song in Japanese. Frankly speaking, I didn't understand a single word, but Miku's singing was quite good. In fact, it was outstanding. She put her heart in every note, every word. Yeah, music probably is the very thing for her to dedicate her life to. It seemed like it wasn't her who chose the music, but the music that has chosen her. The last half hour presented Miku in a completely different light. Oh, thank you. Did you like it? I finally managed it with you. On my own, it's not so good. I, well, I either mess up the words or miss the so songs. String, string, song, string. So it is just perfect with you. Thank you so much. You really have a talent, you know? I just, just to play like that without any preparation. Nope. It seems I changed my opinion about her too hastily. Thanks for the song. Gotta go. See ya. Thanks for... The rest of her words were left behind the door. I leaned down the wall of the club or cabin and sighed. Miku's song was still playing in my mind. I went for lunch with mixed feelings, with a sense of accomplishment and a realisation of time wasted. The canteen was crowded. I couldn't stay unnoticed. Olga called me. Semyon! Come with us. The camp leader, Slavia and Electronic, were sitting at the four-seat table. I nodded and went to get my food. This time, I had to spend several minutes in the queue. Today's menu didn't really differ from other days' menus. The dishes looked the same, at least. When I sat at the table and wished bon appetit to everyone, Olga said, So, what are you thinking? About what? We searched for Shurik all around. It's noon, and he's nowhere to be found. I took a note of the rhyme, but didn't want to point it out. We look all over the camp. I went to the neighbouring forest. Olga looked at me, and I helped too. We must call the place. Maybe we should wait until the evening, I asked lazily. Maybe he went home. That can't be. He may never leave. 
Shurik lives thousands of miles away. By train? The nearest station, she paused, is far off. Now it was getting interesting. Every time the conversation reached a point concerning ways I could leave Sovyanok, all the camp inhabitants started changing the subject. How far is far? Really far. The camp leader looked at me, indicating with her expression that I was asking more questions was not advised. We should go deeper into the forest. Maybe he got lost. Shurik always takes a compass, chimed in Electronic. I wonder what else could be found in his magic vest, assuming he has one. If I were to get lost in the forest, a compass would be no real use. Police. I've got all their albums. We should call the police in the evening. Not right now, at least. Okay, so you'll do it later. They were all silent. We should be able to find him before the evening. We still have time. If he actually got lost, we have no time to lose. We cannot be sure. Then where is he? Where, I ask you, where? There was some truth in the camp leader's words. Hiding the whole day just like that is suspicious. Why would he do that? Shurik seemed to me to be quite a serious pioneer. Yolana would be a better fit for this behaviour. You are not getting rid of me that easily. So there is a good reason to believe that he was gone. All that can be done has already been done. You just have to wait. Slavia, Electronic and Olga looked at me sorrowfully but didn't say a word. I finished my lunch, took the tray back and left the canteen. It's still the first half of the day. What now? The camp was drifting off for an afternoon nap. Only Gender stared at me through his glasses. Of course, he was staring somewhere else, but I had a feeling he was constantly watching me. I bet he knows where Shurik is hiding. He just can't say anything. What do you think? The disappearance of the cybernetics club leader made me think. Maybe it's got something to do with my case. <sighs> Pioneer. The nurse stood in front of me. All of a sudden my vision got hazy and blurred. I was seeing double. I looked at her curiously. Then I looked her in the face. Go and take my place in the infirmary. I have an urgent call. Somebody is injured. Me? No. Somebody else. Take the keys. The nurse threw me the keys and ran away. Why me? Isn't there anyone else in this camp? What exactly should I be doing? What if something happens? Oh, what do I do now? I missed my chance to refuse. I stood in front of the door uncertainly. On one hand, there is nothing to worry about. I'll spend half an hour here and she'll come back. But what if someone comes for actual help? With a broken leg or a head injury? I began to worry too much. I hoped there were no injuries more serious than bruises and scratches in this camp. But at the same time, I could not shake the idea that in a serious situation I would be absolutely useless. I'm sorry to say this old chap, you are fairly useless most of the time. I don't even know how to perform CPR. A magazine on the nurse's table caught my attention. A good way to relax, I guess. This was labelled Soviet fashion. The publication date or month were absent. However, this was not a surprise. There were much stranger things happening here. I don't know much about Soviet magazines. Maybe they didn't actually have publication dates on them. Models dressed in old-fashioned clothes stared at me from the glossy pages. Nowadays, nobody would wear such clothes, I smirked. I wonder if Slavia, for example, considered this fashionable. I can only imagine that what would happen if she appeared in my time wearing something like this. Imagine we were walking hand in hand, I'm wearing my coat with the hood, and she is dressed in a lavish dress covered with lace and things. Seems I'm already imagining Slavia in my world, with me. And not only Slavia. 
This dress better suits Yolana. This cute Sarafan would look good on Alyssa. This skirt and cardigan would look nice on Lena. If only they could be real. No, I saw them, heard them, could even touch them. <laughs> touch them. But still, they are here and I... I simply don't belong in this place. It's alien to me. I'm just waiting for a chance to get out of here. Waiting because nothing is up to me anymore. I sighed, put my head on the table and fell asleep. I was awoken by the noise of the door opening. Lena stood at the door. The nurse isn't here? Then I'll come back later. I'm substituting for her. Since I am responsible for pioneers' lives, I should do it with full responsibility. Although, in fact, I was just afraid of something bad happening because of me. Any health complaints? I tried to give Lena my most professional smile. She turned white, fled. I could hear her screaming from a mile away. Nothing special. Just a little headache. Let's do this! Some painkillers, maybe. Yes. Just lie down on this bed here. Let me follow your breasts. It will take the pain away. Of course, I wasn't aware to find the required medicines, so it took me a while to find them. Finally, I handed over a, a metazimol tablet to Lena. Thank you. She smiled. That was completely unexpected, and I lost touch with reality, staring at her. What? Lena turned awkward in an instant. Listen, I've been wondering, do you like this? No, put your trousers back on. I don't know what got into me, but I grabbed the magazine from the table and showed her that picture of a skirt and a cardigan, which would really suit Lena, in my opinion. Maybe I went completely nuts thinking about all the girls being in my world. Or maybe I wanted to distract myself instead of waiting for the nurse to come back. Lena looked at the picture. Yes, I guess. Is stuff like this in fashion? I guess. She got confused and started blushing. Why do you ask? Really, why? I think you'd look gorgeous in it. Just asking... I think you'd look gorgeous in it. Thank you. It's alright, I'm just being completely honest. We were quiet for some time. How is your headache? Much better, thank you. She smiled. I'll be off. Good luck. Lena went out, and I continued to look through the magazine. After a while, somebody knocked on the door again. I don't know why, it was stolen three years ago. Seems the infirmary is the most popular place to go. Suddenly I decided to roleplay a nurse. Took a pillowcase and stuffed it down my shirt. Okay, just a male version. Took the pillowcase and stuffed it down my trousers. Come in! The door opened and Yolana entered the room. Wow, did I miss a moment when you decided to start knocking? Anything wrong with me knocking? Yes, the door was stolen three years ago. She frowned. Where does it hurt? Why on earth would I tell you? Where is the nurse? I ate her. I imposingly crossed my legs and looked questioningly at her. I'd better go. It'd be better to die than be treated by you. She smiled mischievously. You didn't even let me try. Yolana thought for a moment. Though you could give me some pills. What's bothering you? It took her some time to reply. A heavy stomach. Sure it's not an empty head? I muttered under my breath. What did you say? Nothing. Give me a second. I found the pills in the first drawer I opened. Thank you, Doctor. She smiled cheerfully. Watching Yolana, I could not imagine how such an optimistic and active child could have any health problems. Uh... Let's see. Overdose of stolen candies, right? Or got food poisoning from the canteen? 
Um, bleh, let's annoy her. She gave me a baleful look. No, I left everything for you. Yolanda ran out of the infirmary and slammed the door. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. Again, I went back to studying Soviet fashion trends. Time passed, but the nurse was still absent. I wasn't searching for Shurik, wasn't looking for any clues concerning my situation. I was just sitting and flipping through a magazine. What a flipping magazine it was. Just for a moment, I felt quite satisfied with this situation. So far, everything that has happened here could be seen as a trip to a summer camp, and if nothing changes any time soon, then I can start worrying. Again, somebody knocked on the door. And that is where we stop, dearie. Okay. I hope you've enjoyed this. It's been a laugh. I do love this game. Anyway, please leave a like if you liked it. Please subscribe if you haven't. It all helps. And until the next time, I've been Simon Parsons. This has been Everlasting Summer. Thank you and good night. Thank <laughs> you.